Hey, y'all, in for h and h here. The first thing I want to do is thank Wendell, one of the VIP Patreon team members who inspired this video. Uh, the subject of this video has to do with the FT-710, and for that matter, also the FT-DX-10. So the question came up last year in an email, and I think even maybe a comment in one of the uh, videos, about the FT-710, whether Yesu had put any extra protections in place uh, for those who might want to try to use an HDMI monitor. You may recall that people who had used adapters to convert the DVID over to HDMI had some failures of their FTDX-10 that required it to be, well, uh, repaired by Yesu. Uh, fortunately, um, every, everyone I heard of who sent one back um, was able to get it repaired under warranty. Uh, you know, you, you have to be careful, though, because the manual does say that you need to use a DVID monitor uh, so no no adapter would be involved. But Yesu apparently was kind enough to go ahead and replace those anyway, which I think, you know, is good upon them. You know, it is their design, and their design maybe made it a little more susceptible to the damage. So uh, with that, I want to mention another thing about the comments. I answer questions in the comments sometimes that go deeper than what the videos do. So if you're not reading the comments, you're missing things. But also, if you're not reading the video description, when I'm editing, I may think of something I wish I had said in the video, and I'll put it in the description, or I may put links in the description. Uh, I may make a correction in the description in case I uh, said a word wrong, which can happen. So I encourage you also read the video descriptions as well as the comments uh, because you're, you're probably missing out on some information. In fact, I know you are because... I get questions about things, even even questions in a comment that were covered in another comment. So uh, do avail yourself to that. Make sure you read the video descriptions as well as browse through the comments for the videos. Okay, let's jump into this. So uh, the issues with the FTDX10 having to do with using an adapter so that you could use, say, an HDMI type monitor or even you know input to it an HDMI television. You've seen my station here. I use a 32-inch a, a Samsung monitor on the wall to display uh, what well, usually my logbook. And, uh, but for the FTDX10, I have an actual EVID monitor that I happen to have had um, in a closet. Had the cable and everything, so I plugged it in, and it worked. And so uh, I, I've been very fortunate. I've had that radio since... March of 2021 with no failures. So I think the uh, the approach the the manual recommends, which is an actual DVID, a D, yeah, DVID monitor, easy for me to say, um, was the safe approach. So I think it's safe to say that following the manual and using an actual DVID type monitor and cable, uh, you know, will protect you. So now, what about the FT710? So the um, the schematic for the FT710 was released in the technical supplement, and you can look in there and you can see some differences. And, and again, this question came up uh, late last year, and I answered it. Uh, there are some additions in the FT710 that uh, appear to, you know, be put there intentionally. Well, you know, if you're Yesu and you had a lot of radio sent back, you know, the FTDX10s to get repaired, uh, you know, that's costing money for those repairs. And, uh, and f to my knowledge, they were all done under warranty. Um, now, some someone on social media said that Yesu warned them not to try that, not to do it again, you know, not to use that adapter again. But if you're Yesu, you're going to think about when you release the next radio, if you intend to put the DVID uh, connector again, then uh, you might want to add some uh, some safeties in there. So with that, uh, I'm going to let me let me minimize myself here. I'll turn on the the screen that's going to show you the schematic. Now this is the FTDX10 schematic for the DVID connector. Let me zoom in. There we go. So you see the DVID connector here. What I want to draw your attention to is this fuse. F1801, it's a 0 0.63 amps fuse, and then you'll see that it's uh, in line with the DVI 5 volt supply here. 
Now, that fuse is a surface mount device. That's not a little glass cylinder in there with a, with a little filament in it. That's an actual surface mount uh, fuse. And unless you're comfortable doing that, you would want to take advantage of your Yesu warranty and send it back to have them replace it. Um, also notice over here uh, on pin 6 and 7 of the DVID connector, just a couple of resistors there. All right. Now, we're going to go take a look at the EFT-710 schematic. Uh, let me zoom in to the same area. Oh, and by, and by the way, uh, before I zoom in, let me show you. It, the, both radios are using the EP-952, which is a, a actually an HDMI chip. But you, you've probably heard this before. That chip can output audio and video high resolution. It's overkill for this radio. So uh, rather than putting an HDMI connector, which would be able to handle audio and high-res video, they chose a DVI connector. My theory on that is is that they got a really good deal on them, and after all, we're not putting out a real high-res video, and we're not putting out any audio from the radio. So I think it's probably a cost-saving uh, idea. Maybe they got a great deal on the chip, but not the connector, so they went with DVI. That's just my theory on that. All right, so I'm going to zoom in to the same area this is the FT710, and now notice over here where the fuse is, there's the DVI 5 volts. It's a different looking symbol there. Well, that is, uh, Little Fuse makes those. That is a mini SMD, which stands for surface mount device, um, and that's a part of the part number as well, by the way. That It's a mini SMD C, as in Charlie, 050-FOXTROT-02. It's designated as Q1802 in the, in the schematic and on the circuit board. And then you'll, you'll notice a, a diode here, a silicone rectifier. Uh, you know, and if you can see that what that is is the, uh, remember, electron flows toward, toward the bar here with the arrow. So there's the positive side. Positive can go through the arrow. Think of it that way. All right, but we've got we've got this fuse here. Now, what's about what what is it about that fuse? Why doesn't it look like this one? See, well, this is a self-resetting fuse. It's rated for 0.5 amps. So if uh, if it experience if that circuit uh, sees more than 0.5 amps pulled through it, that fuse will open to protect uh, the the rest of the circuitry. Well, then, uh, well, once the error goes away, then the fuse will reset. So that's very convenient. You do not have to return the radio to Yesu to have them uh, remove and replace that surface mount fuse. So that's uh, an, one improvement. But also notice here on pin 6 and 7, we have a diode array that is all in a chip. And that is electrostatic uh, discharge protection that's also been added in the ft 710 aess um, transceiver. So you you folks with the FT710, you've got a little bit more protection in place in case you do experiment with, you know, trying to use an adapter and an HDMI uh, type monitor. So I just wanted to draw that to your attention. Um, and, and a final thought on this. If you do want to experiment, do it while you're within the three-year warranty, okay? Uh, th don't wait until it's out of warranty and say, okay, well, now it's out of warranty. I'm going to try a an HDMI monitor. No, no, no. Do it during the three-year warranty period. So if you're inclined to hook up an external monitor to your FT710, uh, do it now so that if you do have a failure, you've got Yesu backing you up. And I, I mean, I'm assuming they will still repair that under warranty uh, even if you do try an HDMI monitor. I hope they will. But again, you'll see there schematically, you've got a little bit more protection in place there. Still, uh, you know, EP952 overkill of a chip for the resolution that we're sending out to the monitor, and there's no audio. And like I said, I just think the DVI connectors were were in a warehouse somewhere in uh, in large quantities so they could be purchased for a lot less than what the HDMI connectors would have cost, you know, because the DVI uh, DE technology is an older technology. 
Okay, well, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Uh, do me a favor, thank the Patreon team members in a comment. Um, they would appreciate that. I would appreciate that because you wouldn't be watching this video if they were not there backing this channel. And I mean that wholeheartedly. I would not be able to afford to put the time and effort into doing this were it not for those Patreon team members. And I should say especially the long haulers, those who have supported the channel for, well, some now two and a half years. So, uh, and I'm, I'm going, you know, every now and then I will put out a video where I recognize the VIP Patreon team members, but I will also recognize those who have supported the channel for over a year, regardless of where, what level they're at. So I do appreciate everyone who supports the channel, uh, but the VIPs absolutely will get a shout out in uh, each one of the videos that I release. If you go back, you'll see some that I've, I've done in the past. There was one in December and then uh, there was one... Well, no, I think December was the was the last one. I lose track now. But every now and then I do a dedicated video thanking those Patreon team members because, again, without them you wouldn't be watching this video. So thanks again for watching the video and thanks for supporting the channel. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who bring you these videos. If you're watching a video now, it's because of what I call the long haulers. They've uh, joined through the Patreon program and supported this channel for a year and two and even more. Those long haulers are what, you know, funds the channel enough that I can keep these videos coming. I appreciate any, any level you can help though. Uh, there are three levels of support. You can find one that's comfortable for you if you like this type of content and want to see it continue. Uh, you can vote, as they say, vote with your wallet to help uh, offset the cost of doing this. To uh, join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And if you would, give the video a thumbs up, a like. That helps us out with YouTube's search algorithm and costs you nothing. And you're actually helping the channel uh, by doing that. And also consider subscribing to the channel. That helps as well. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video, usually two a week, occasionally a third. And also, finally, if you would, please share the link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks again for watching, and 73 from N4HNH.